Thank you, and indulge me to speak in English. Um, so I'm going to try and do this standing, but I, I'm not used to this too much. Normally I've got a pulpit in front of me, so if I start dancing like I'm listening to Paolo Conte, just tell me and I'll try to stop. Um, well, just for a start, I think I, I want to thank uh, and recognize the Dot IT Registry for all its accomplishment over the past 30 years. We've already heard some of it, and I think we, we can all say it's quite impressive, and especially the growth over the past few years has been enormous, and there's more potential. And so if we go back to uh, 30 years ago, of course, as uh, you saw on the uh, other slides, of course, uh, Dot IT is part of the uh, research center hosted by University of Pisa. Uh, and that's the very same structure which 30 years ago joined with ARPANET, the precursor of the internet. Um, and what was ARPANET? Well, it was a project which was created 50 years ago uh, by a bunch of people before Paul Mukopetris, um, including these three people. You've got Steve Crocker, who's just stepped down at the top there, who's just stepped down as chair of the board of ICANN, Vince Cerf, who used to be the chair of the board of ICANN, and John Postel, who run the uh, INA functions which, were, which became the ICANN institution in the late 1990s. And you can see what they did in the, the, the late 60s. That's what the internet, or what would become the internet, looked like. Just four nodes. That was 1969, the ARPA network. Zero websites at the time. All very distributed already, and something that had been developed as a collaborative. And in fact, if we fast forward a little bit, we see that Pisa and Italy were amongst the European pioneers of the internet 30 years ago, joining ARPANET in, uh, in 87, being amongst the first four or five uh, places in Europe that were connected to the US and the, uh, the other nodes internationally were to places like Japan, so still a fairly small network. And obviously since then, all our lives and our uh, economies have been changed gradually, and the internet obviously is becoming part of everyday life. It's underpinning increasingly our entire economies, our entire societies, our, our lives. And I think we can all say there's been in, an enormous progress in innovation, in diffusion of knowledge, and as Paul Mokotovitch was saying, an enormous expansion in how we can communicate globally and in all sorts of ways. And I think it's useful to sort of remember what's been happening over the past uh, 30 years. Whilst the .IT domains were growing, what were we experiencing as people and as societies? So um, you're familiar, you'll be familiar with all this, but I think it's just worth having a look back. For instance, what's happened? The, what is the library today? I've got a portable library here, which lets me access more knowledge than that biblioteca over there. Not uh, maybe as enjoyable, it's a different, different way of enjoying it. Things have changed a lot. 1998, 10 years after dot .IT uh, came online, so to speak, we became an institution. You were one, one of the first physical institutions that was helping to support the internet and uh, coordinate it internationally. Look what's happened there. It's all still recent. Facebook, only 13 years ago. We had, in 1998, 3.3 million domains. Remember that number? And remember how many .IT domains we have today. We have as many .IT domains today as there were domains 20 years ago for the whole world. If you put it into perspective, it's quite impressive. And then that's what the internet quickly became just 10 or so years ago. Um, and all the innovations that we've, uh, we've seen since. And I think as we look to the future, of course, we can think about all sorts of technologies. Uh, we can ask ourselves questions. And I think, as, as uh, Domenico was saying earlier, when you think about the potential here, we've got only three something million .IT domains. And yes, we look at France with four point something million. We look at the UK with 10 something million. Um, Germany's got over 16 million. There's a lot of potential. And so I think it's a, it's a very promising future for .IT. Now, when we look at all this innovation, what is behind it? What is, or what is under the hood, so to speak? How does it all work, or how can we make it work uh, and contribute to the economy that way? Well, now we're at um, close to 4 billion users, and actually the majority of them 
are now in Asia 50.1% and is bound to grow. That's the sort of thing that we're looking at worldwide. And we've supported that enormous expansion. Remember, 1998, so 20 years ago, we had 148 million users. Now, close to 4 billion. The next billion is probably not that far away. And so behind this, we need to manage technically how the internet can expand. And this is done by a collaborative uh, of organizations of people that help run the internet technically behind the scenes. .it is one of these entities, and there are a few registrars in this room who are other entities, and we at ICANN are the sort of host for many of these developments. So the internet is administered by a, a loose, decentralized, distributed uh, collection of organizations and people who set rules, standards, and policies and provide technical support for the internet. You've got .it here in the middle. There's uh, all sorts of regional internet registries that run numbers. You've got network information centers, root servers operators, Internet Engineering Task Force, the ATF that sets standards, the World Wide Web Consortium standards for the web at a web level, ISPs that provide access, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's not one entity that globally manages the internet. We work with a collection of organizations, both independent and interdependent. And that's how the internet has been able to grow over the past 30 years, thanks to efforts at a national level by the likes of .it and coordination at a global level between the likes of .it and their peers all over the world. And ICANN is just one part of this larger ecosystem. So what do we do? Um, we being this community that includes people like .it. Well, our mission is to ensure the stable and secure operation of the Internet's unique identifier system. So that means is that it's about the domain names like .it, .com, .info, etc. It's about Internet protocol addresses which are behind those domain names and which enable you to find uh, the right website, to find the right person or device connected to the Internet, wherever they may be, uh, elsewhere on the network, anywhere else in the world so that when you type a web address in your browser, you get to where you want exactly. Um, and we're a, a purely technical organization that's responsible for coordinating, setting, and implementing the rules that um, govern the domain name system. Uh, and this technical organization is, uh, is done through something called the multi-stakeholder model. Um, in practice, what that means is that everyone or anyone who has got an interest, a stake in the domain name system, anyone who is impacted by the domain name system could get involved and could participate in developing the policies and the procedures which enable the domain name system to work and to grow and to allow for more and more people and devices to get added onto the internet. And so when I say everyone, that means businesses, that means domain name registries like .it, that means the registrars that sell the domain names, even the end users, the registrants, uh, can be involved, and even governments have got a, a place. So let's see how that works. It's a, it's a, it's a busy uh, slide, but in some, there's three big components to ICANN. You've got the organization, that's who I work for. It's like a secretariat, and we host discussion amongst all these stakeholders. We've got a board which is made up of all these stakeholders. And then there's what we refer to often as the community. And the community, it's all these people that uh, are involved, that want to be involved, that have an interest in the domain name system. Many of them are here in this room because there's a lot of Italians involved. And they get together in the seven different committees all together in ICANN that have specialties like numbers, IP addresses, uh, domain names or country code domains, and then um, advisory bodies like the governmental advisory uh, body that provide specific input. In the case of governments, for instance, they provide input on issues of public policy uh, and the public interest, for instance. And, and, and all these different people basically come around the table at ICANN to discuss and agree together the policies that will shape the future uh, technical uh, landscape for the domain name system. And they're supposed to do that all in a consensus uh, way. But it works pretty well uh, overall, <clears throat> especially because basically we've enabled the growth of the internet over that, well, those past 20 to 30 years from 148 million to close to 4 billion people without the DNS itself ever having a real problem. Now, a couple of examples of recent um, projects and programs that the uh, 
ICANN multi-stakeholder community has been involved in. Uh, there's one that's been referred to already, and that's quite substantial. It's a massive expansion of uh, the domain name landscape internationally. Uh, since, uh, since 2014, it took a few years to get uh, ready. For the community had several years of developing specific policies. There was a lot of demand for more domains to provide more choice to people in terms of what top-level domains they wanted to register to provide opportunities for innovation, for competition. And so we moved from having those 22 top-level domains, generic top-level domains that you might know, like dot, .info, .gov, etc., uh, .com, .biz, to an extra more than a thousand, which were added uh, to what we call the root, you know, top-level uh, database, if you want, of internet domains, uh, just in the last three years. And we've, uh, you've heard about it from uh, from Domenico. There's new names that go from uh, city names like .paris to regional names, Corsica, for instance, to very other generic names like dot, well dot menu, dot football, so you can have dot Audi, dot BMW, etc., etc. That's all happening. This is the biggest expansion of the domain name space in 20 years, and this has just happened. It's uh, in development now, and I think you'll hear later on from others in this room, uh, maybe this afternoon, about uh, all these developments in the domain name space. I think one of the very interesting things that explains not just the expansion of the domain name space, but also the global expansion of the domain name space was very important as we get to a stage where the internet is no more mainly driven by Western uh, countries and people. It's now very much in places like Asia. It's growing very rapidly in places like Africa, Latin America. And so one of the big developments over the last few years have been what we call the internationalized domain names. So instead of using the Latin script like us, uh, here in this room, or many of us in this room, we can use now the Chinese script or the Arabic script or the Thai script. And that, uh, and in this new expansion of the domain name space, there's been more than 100 internationalized domain names that have come up, a lot of them in China, a lot of them in, Ara uh, in Arab states, uh, and they're starting to have quite a bit of traction and hundreds of thousands of, of registrations. So it's a significant development because that's really the internet becoming even more global, enabling more and more people to use the internet in their own alphabet, in their own scripts, develop their own local content. Um, and so it's, uh, it, there are, you know, the internet is still rapidly evolving in many ways, and, and the domain name system is certainly an example of that. Another example of a major multi-stakeholder effort has been what, what has been referred to as a transition. Um, because the uh, ARPANET back in the days was a, a project funded by the United States government, the United States government had retained an oversight um, over how the internet works. Um, and so they decided to step back and to hand over this oversight to the global multi-stakeholder community about three years ago. And we went through a huge global consultation process, uh, all these stakeholders together, crafting new structures, new governance mechanisms for ICANN so that now, since October last year, in fact, um, we, we are fully independent as an organization and as ICANN, and we're fully answerable not just to one government like the U.S. government, but to the whole of the global community. And that was a huge process with all these different stakeholders, these businesses, these NGOs, civil society, end users, all involved together with government in crafting the future of one of the main governance mechanisms for the Internet. And that's important because the multi-stakeholder model uh, can achieve a lot. Many of you in the room are involved. .IT has been involved uh, on and off for quite a while in ICANN. The Italian government has been very involved. In fact, the Italian government was very important. It's just transitioned here because it was uh, in part during the Italian presidency of the EU that this happened, and the Italian government really helped uh, sort of promote, make sure that there was buy-in and support for this major evolution of the internet. Um, and there's the potential for more. Um, we have managed this huge global process involving all sorts of stakeholders on a very global problem in just two years with a deadline which was the American election of last year. We had to finish that transition before a new president was in place. Um, we can achieve a lot and solve a lot of complex issues by bringing together different perspectives, different types of expertise, um, around the table, different types of responsibilities. And I think this is something that can be very helpful for the whole of the Internet, something that can be applied at national level and at international level. 
we know there's a lot of challenges ahead and a lot of opportunities. We talked about blockchain. We might talk about artificial intelligence. You can name it. Um, but we also have a lot of big social issues, societal issues to think about now that the internet is really among us. How are we going to deal with um, you know, the rising tide of cyber security threats? How are we going to make sure that we have privacy properly safeguarded in this global online world? In fact, uh, this, the implementation of the new European regulation known as GDPR is a major priority at the moment at ICANN, and we're in touch with the Italian authority for data protection. I hope, I hope to see them later on today. All, for all these issues, we need to have a dialogue. We need to have stakeholders around the table. And so I would very much encourage you to join us as I can if you're interested, impacted by the DNS, share your expertise, share your views, help us shape the technical future of the Internet. And that can start at national level. Um, so in the context of .it, in the context of big questions related to the Internet at Italian level, Use these multi-stakeholder structures to generate a dialogue, to bring the expertise together, and join us at international level to set the global rules, to set the global direction that will give us the direction for the next 30 years of the internet. Thank you, and thank, thank you, you again much. to the IT. Everybody, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Seiler. We're running over our time, but I have just a single question for a short answer. We solve a lot of challenge here, which are also great opportunities. Are there threats we need to manage in the next future? Of course, I think there's threats we need to manage now. Yeah. Um, I think the, the, the great thing with the internet is that you know, it's, it's already contributed a lot to the economy, and I think it's contributed a lot of good. Um, but I think we tend to forget all the good. We tend to take for granted the fact yeah. that we've got access to all this information, all this knowledge. I mean, the reason I, I showed the picture of a library is that I've always loved books, I've always loved knowledge. And I remember when I was a teenager going to my local library, and I loved it, but I was always like, ah, oh, I want this to have a book, I want this. And then the internet arrives, and I've got access to all of that just at my fingertips. It's amazing, and we tend to forget it. We tend to forget it because there are real threats, because there's uh, you know, cyber security threats, there's malware, there's big cyber attacks. And privacy concerns, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And what I'm really worried is that just as the internet can bring us so much good, people lose confidence and trust in the in this technology. And so that's why I think even more than before, we need to join forces, talk together, and address these challenges. Um, yeah, together. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Mr. Thank Sayle. you.